Should the U.S. reduce its military budget? Would the consequences overshadow the benefits of such a decision? I don't believe that we should ever think about reducing our military budget. If, if, if this country over here thought that, hey man, we can go get them over there, they'll come get you. I mean, you look at Russia and Ukraine right now. Okay, Russia is rolling up on Ukraine because they feel like we can get them. I think one of the reasons yeah. why no tries to come mess with us is because they know we got all we got all the smoke you want. Okay, and I think that's important. And if you look at the history of the world, we live in a very violent and aggressive world. Like I said, look at Russia. Russia looked at Ukraine and said, "I think I can get that ass. I think we. I think I can. I can, I can whoop you. So I'm gonna come over here and take your stuff." But there has to be, fellas, there's got to be a board. Now, I think the De Department of Defense are the ones who oversee the military budget and all that. My mind, very simple, because I truly believe that we have the smartest of the smart. We got the smartest economists. We got the smartest mathematicians. Somebody in the Department of Defense who oversees the military budget should know exactly what we need every year for this budget. It was reported that Halliburton gained $39.5 billion in federal contracts related to the Iraq war. A Benetine Green, Greenhouse, I think that's the name. Say, wait, wait a minute, hold on a second. It appears that Halliburton is getting special treatment. This was a guy, 20 year experience, 20 year experience in construction. They got demoted the potential corruption aspect at the top that I believe, fellas, it's going to always be there. See? So I, that would be my answer. I, I truly believe that we should do all we can to keep protecting our country and, and continue to be a superpower that we are at the military level. The answer is absolutely no. The United States does only spends 13.3 on federal spending budget so only 13.3 percent out of a hundred goes to the military that's only 13.3 even if you saw a, let's say that let's say the military budget for the federal spending budget was 25 percent i still would be having this argument of absolutely not we should not reduce it because it's only 25 percent we are number one because of our military, We're, the strength we have with our military is so powerful. And even as strong as it is, stuff like 9-11 still happened. The answer is absolutely no, you do not reduce the military budget. You keep it exactly where it's at. Um, I agree with the two gentlemen. I don't think that we should reduce our um, our budget for the, gov uh, for the military. Um, one reason is what well, both gentlemen already said is we are the powerhouse who everyone has to come to and we are like the big brother to everyone else who step in to help. Um, another reason I would say, um, another thing I would say is I feel like we should be more focused on where money is being allocated to so we can make sure that we can help veterans once they are become are out of the military have um, some more funding and things and support uh, once they leave, once they've already served our country. The funding can also help lose a lot of jobs. There's about 3 million people or so who are in the military who work in different positions. And then a lot of guys can't even go to college without first going to the military. So I think it'll take a lot of those opportunities away too by defunding, because now you take away a lot of jobs. As well. Is there a way to not have one branch in particular have their feathers ruffled knowing that their branch is receiving a lot less than the other? At the end of the day, everybody has to realize that we're a team. So our goal here is to keep everyone protected and keep jobs going and things like that. Why is it difficult for human beings to measure the weight of truth? I feel um, a lot of people learn that as a child and are able to get away with things. And they use it as a tactic to, to move on in life. Um, I think other people are insulting your intelligence and feel like you're not smart to figure out things when it comes to lying. And then some people do things to protect your feelings. So I think those are the reasons why people lie. But how, how do you measure it is based on your own life experience. It's not really about like, I don't feel like there's a real solid answer on 
how certain, because I have different life experiences from everybody up here. So I feel like I would rather take on the truth so we can move forward and not have to deal with it instead of keep lying about something and have to keep remembering the lie. The way to the life. Some people aren't, they like to avoid conflicts or therefore they may lie or they may, you know, do other things to avoid being in a situation where they may hurt somebody's feeling. That's why. It's one of, just to start this thing off, it's God's choice. It's God's hope that we would follow these 10 commandments. And one of them, and the number ninth one is, do not lie. I do believe some people can't handle it. I believe that, I believe that every single person in the world is a liar. I believe I'm a liar. I believe you're a liar. It's in us to be a liar. The fine line of liar is exaggeration. I call an exaggeration a lie. And everybody I know exaggerates. If there was there was ten thousand people there, and then there was really two thousand, or just it's just in our blood, it's in our human nature to. Yeah, man, there was a couple thousand people there, and I will stop, and I I regroup, I pray about it, and I focus, and I say, you know what? There wasn't two thousand people there. It was about one hundred fifty. It was about one hundred fifty to like two thousand, and then I continue the story. But the truth is, to be a better person. To be a better person on the inside and out, you should not lie. If I got a booger in my nose, I want somebody to tell me. But some people don't, don't want to be told. Hey, bag, we'll keep it to yourself. I, I get it. Some people don't want to be told that. Those people are the people that can't handle the truth. Dedication, practice, prayer, the truth cell sets you free. Is that one of the causes of lies, do you think? Do you think it's because people want to be accepted, hence they, they put stuff out there that isn't authentic, Bryant? Well, I feel like some people uh, fantasize more about the lie and it makes them feel better about themselves. So they'll tell a lie to kind of enhance whatever it is they have going on. The truth is literally determined. I think you're, you're, the first sign of, of your truth starts with you as a kid. I'll give you an example. Let's take a kid that's growing up in a family with no love. Uh, on the way to school, he may have to fight. He's in a, a tough neighborhood. Uh, every day is different. If you ask that kid, how do you view the world? His truth of a world being a world where I don't get support is going to be his truth. And it's going to be a very strong conviction because it is being based upon his personal life. We all would want to be liked, appreciated, um, recognized. I think a large part of that feeling determines truth. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I have let my mouth get me in trouble by being truthful. <laughs> by being truthful. A lot of us don't want to be wrong. We just don't like being wrong. So the way I look at truth is, is always be open to changing your truth. Always be open to listening to another's perspective and you know what if their perspective just never matches your truth then also be open to understanding that everybody is not going to understand your truth that's okay yeah yeah why uh, walk a why walk a mile for somebody you won't even cross the street there's three sides of the story there's my side and there's his side but there's always the truth. And every example David gave, there's still the truth. That kid had his truth, and that's the story he tells himself, and I get it. But that don't make it the truth. That just makes it what he believes. This is for a second there. Uh, Brian, I think you had your index finger up as well, my friend. Yeah, I just was really going over um, the, the four topics, the reasons why I said people lie, just to kind of just re um, reiterate it again. Um, just for this overall thing was, a learned behavior as a child, like where I said, it's come from a child learning to tell a lie and they were able to get out of a beating, you know, a consequence or was able to get something they needed. Um, lie out of fear, which if you're in a spiritual realm, you don't operate out of fear, you operate out of faith. So therefore you shouldn't lie. David's example is not gonna make sense because black or white, two plus two equals four, black or white, there's your side, there's my side, but there's all these. Jamie Sparling, guys, we've had a ton of fun. David Justice is in round number three. Marcus Bagwell, Brian McKinney, they're going to do it again to find out who goes to round number three.